Okay, hello, greetings and welcome. All right, so this one's on um, integrating uh, Qi Sao into uh, the internals. How does internal Wing Chun and Qi Sao work? For, for Qi Sao, the, the Fu Sao arms usually are right. You can just hang the shoulder down. Uh, it's pretty easy to, to figure out. The Bong Sao arm that raises up and down is usually where most of the errors occur. So there's three simple tests. Uh, you, you put your, your fingers on your shoulder, find those two little dimples in your shoulder, and then just roll the, the bonk so up and down and feel the changes in those two dimples. You don't want any rising, so that, that has to stay down. So you focus the relaxation around the shoulder, around those dimples, and you just keep the, keep the bonk so connected and linked down into your root. Uh, you don't want any rising at that point. Uh, the second point is just touch the clavicle and check for any lifting of the clavicle. The clavicle has to stay down as you, as you rotate. And then uh, your third test, take put your hand on the lat, do, do the, uh, the bong sound, see if there's any lifting. Now, just on that quick test, when I get to about there, uh, no lifting, no lifting. Now it's just starting to pull. So I have to compensate by hanging that, that area in my back and lat and softening it down a little bit more. So that just reflected, I've got a little bit of tension there that's formed and I've got to release that tension. So you do these three tests, the clavicle, uh, the two uh, dimples in the shoulder, just put your fingers in and, uh, and then put your hand underneath. The, the hand underneath is the, the, the deepest um, self check. Uh, some people will lift and stretch up as they do a bong sao. That disconnects the line and you're, you're going to get your root cut straight away if someone has a, an internal fascia perspective to how they do Wing Chun. Okay, so once you've got that, you, you basically need to have learnt the vital breathing. So building the ball qigong exercise, take that fluidic quality sensation, uh, uh, pour breathe it through your whole body, and then learn how to just extend that feeling of vital energy out. Once you've done those, uh, those three, four uh, basic Qigong exercises, then you can apply it to, uh, to Qi Sao. So the, f the first uh, thing we started is how to do it wrong. So he physically uh, thinks about uh, the rolling action. So we roll from one side to the other. And uh, what I want you to do is stay relatively neutral. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and just follow, follow my lead on the roll. That's it, okay. So as we roll side to side, uh, most people are gonna be thinking about their structure, thinking about the technique, and what's gonna happen is as they think, the mental space contracts. And uh, as they, they try and feel what I'm doing, the space contracts, and as they use muscle, the space contracts. So the three bodies are becoming smaller. And this is your normal uh, physical way of learning any, any movement. As soon as we've, uh, we've started the, in the physical, now from there, I relax the vital energy out until I can catch his base. So I produce the feeling of sung, or relaxation release. I tune my mind to vital. I put my will through the vital and I extend that energy uh, through his system. And uh, now what I want to do, it's easy to do when you're not moving, but when you are moving, I've got to continually keep this uh, feeling inside the, the motion as I'm uh, 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 running this, this energy. And what's, what'll happen is my partner will unconsciously start to become immune to what I'm doing. So, he, he will naturally start to go, oh, I've got to be a bit more grounded. I've got to keep my feet on the ground. I've got to relax more. And with internal energy, it's relaxation of the muscle fascia relationship, which gives him an immunity to the effect of my energy picking up his balance. So this, this extending of energy, and even if he didn't know what internal is, he'll unconsciously start to relax and hang the muscle so he's not affected. So he's actually learning internal without any explanation, just following his survival mechanism of not getting pushed over during Qi Sao. Now, <clears throat> once you've done the, the physical rolling, and whatever your mechanics are for rolling, whether you're doing full high circles or keeping it tight and not really lifting the bonks up too much, everyone's got different variations, doesn't matter which method you do. 
as long as you focus your will on the breath, the breath on the feeling of life force, open the joint stretch through your partner and go under wherever their tensions are. Some people you've got to go go all the way under the feet, other people just under the, under the core, other people under the tension, the shoulders. Some people are very open, some people are very closed. It's a different learning curve for each person and it's, everyone's a new puzzle. Okay, so, so you've done the, 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 the physical rolling, you've worked out your body mechanics, you started to integrate the internal of just relaxing, hanging, sinking, and extending the chi, extending the vital energy. Uh, and then from the vital, we move to extending the astral. And when you go from, from vital to astral, the pressure at the point of contact changes. Now, when I'm in a vital state, I am elastic. I'm, I'm, I'm an elastic band on his, his body. And then when I extend the mind and the vital, it affects him. But there's pressure at the point of contact. You need to develop the fascia web of your body to get this to function. When we go to astral, it's more hydraulic. And I don't need to hang my elbows and hang the muscles as much. I can inflate the body like a balloon. So when I'm, when I'm rolling astrally, the feeling is more one of hydraulic pressure and, uh, and, and, and floating in my partner. So I'm blowing my balloon up and I'm putting that pressure astrally into him. So those of you who have learned the first transformation, the four cycle breath and tuning the breath exercises to, tune, to make this vital energy um, much more thicker, slower, and hydraulic in nature. So it moves from a, a, a tensecrity state into a hydraulic pressurized energy field state, more like a, a water balloon rather than a trampoline uh, and a complex series of springs. Then you can train astrally. Those exercises all on the Vimeo channel, there's a bunch of free ones on, the, on YouTube. Just go through them and develop those, those exercises. Once you've worked with astral, you've got to go through every mechanical structure and build it as a habit. If you do something correctly a thousand or so times, it becomes an unconscious habit and you can put it into the background so it's just there. And then you fine tune and improve it and put more volume of energy through it. <clears throat> Let's say you did 50% of them wrong and 50% of them right. Your habit isn't perfect. Your habit is 50% wrong. So the center of gravity of, of what you're doing will be much lower, even though you've gotten it right and you took all that time to find out how to do it. Be very, very careful about reinforcing any energy movement with uh, a lax mind. Make sure your will is there, your focus is there, your 100% effort or nothing, or don't do it. Uh, if you just do the hard work without a focused mind and having it perfectly correct, the center of gravity of the unconscious ability to move energy will lower itself and contaminate itself. So only put your best effort in or nothing. And in, in over time, you'll end up at a much better place. So less training with 100% effort is much better than more training with 50% effort. Uh, and, uh, and, and this will hold true. So uh, really figure out how to do it and do it perfectly and build up your unconscious habits. Now from the astral, <clears throat> then I'm interested in, in looking at his uh, mental body balance. So we have this exercise on, the, on many of the videos where he lifts his elbows. I stop him from lifting his elbows and the tension line to his foot is there. And then I pull on his foot to bring his balance out. The moment I do this, I feel a stretch from elbow to foot. And as I pull on that stretch, I feel like a magnet, his mental matrix that holds his balance in, stretching out as, as his balance comes out. So I'm finding base, tension line, a magnetic quality under the tension line, which is a mental matrix, the balance itself, which is leaving the center of the mental body in that moment. So you, you define these qualities, you write them down. I can feel the base. I can feel the tension line connection to the base. I can feel as I stretch his balance out, I can feel his balance and I can feel his mental matrix. And I can feel the mental space or the edges of his balance. So once you've done that, you, you pull your partner up, but then you move your partner around on a circle and, and you pull the energy in different directions on his mental body. So as you expand the mental body and slightly displace it out of the astral physical, the balance gets lost. And when you see um, uh, demonstrations on YouTube where people have these unusual hops and reactions and jerkiness and, and it looks fake, that's usually pulling the mental body out and affecting the person. 
Now, when you're using a mental body, there's almost no pressure. It's all mind, mind connection. You're using a hand to feel, but you don't need to use the hand to influence, use your mind to influence. With the astral, there's a soft pressure, and with the vital, there's heavy pressure, because I want to build fascia. So when he barges in with his weight and I relax it into the elasticity of my body, I can build the elastics through him putting weight on me. So there's one third of your training is building the physical biotensecurity web and using vital energy awareness to, to, to activate it. The second is building the astral or the chi body, the, the, the deeper sense of vital energy that's integrated into purpose, it's slower, it's thicker and it has a personality. Vital energy is raw, astral energy is, is metabolized into a purpose. So chi always has purpose, it's a type of chi. Fire chi, water chi, air chi and so forth, all of these types. And then the mental body is the center of balance of the mind. And that center of balance of the mind, when you relax through the layers into the underlying stillness, that's where you have the essence of spirit. It's also in the center of balance. So the center of balance of mind on the outside uh, of, of, of the mental body shell, it's balance itself. On the essence, it's the essence of consciousness. It's that one part of you that when your physical body dies, that part of you is going to leave your physical and astral self and the mind is freed up uh, at the moment of death of the physical and astral body. And that mental body is what we want to cultivate. For spiritual development, we want to understand what is the spirit, how do we access it, how do we develop it. So if you're training Wing Chun as a vehicle for spiritual development, you start with training the fascia and the life force. And then you develop the astral chi and let us sink the chi and expand the chi and rise the chi and create different effects with it. And then you work on what is the mental body, what is the spirit, the outside of the spirit, and balance. Essence of the spirit is the essence of mind, that inner light of the mind, and how to develop that. If you read Franz Baden's book, Initiation to Hermetics, he's got 10 steps of mental training, training the spirit, 10 steps of astral training, training the chi, 10 steps of physical training, training the body, the lifestyle of a practicer. All the instructions are there. Just uh, pick up a PDF online. It's out of copyright a long time ago, I believe. So there's lots of, uh, um, of them around. Okay, so back into the Wing Chun. <clears throat> now, in, in some schools of Wing Chun, we have this swallowing, um, shooting, rising and sinking types of Qi. And some people call them body methods. So for the moment, I won't worry about the rolling as such. We'll just take the shape of, of, of in Qi Sao. And don't worry about um, where our arms are. We just need contact points. Chi Sao is just a way for Wing Chun people to train it. Other arts will have their elbows in different positions. Like some people would have this elbow tucked right in here and other people would have it hanging and floating. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you, whatever your system requires. But from, from this point, I want to pick one of those four elemental aspects. So if I'm doing swallowing energy, um, I'm creating a magnetic quality. I'm plucking the joints. All the exercises for this I've got on YouTube and Vimeo, uh, the Marshall Man website, and, and so forth. So you, you can um, uh, choose what, what energy you run. So there I'm, I'm going more electric, and here I'm going magnetic. There is no signal on my hand what I'm doing, and he doesn't know until his body experiences it. So he feels it before he knows what's happening. Then his mind goes, oh, that must be magnetic because I'm getting sucked in, or that's electric. Uh, so these are a polarity of pair. So train that pair. You might go several electric and several magnetic or backwards and forwards, but you don't tell your partner. And uh, when you've done that for a little bit, you start uh, putting rising energy in and uh, your, your partner floats. Now, because it's rising, he's not going back. He's not going forward. He, he's just moving upwards to a point where his body can't go up anymore and only his mind and energy goes up. And... Uh, Again, no signaling. I'm just putting that energy inside him. And then, uh, then uh, you, you sink the energy inside your partner's body. When he's got nowhere to go, he'll just soften down in, inside. Depending on the, on the personality type, when you sink, uh, you only want to use sinking a few inches from the center 
so the person goes oh, into their stance. Uh, if you do it too, too much, then you, they'll end up in a place where you shoot them into the floor and it's not really good for people's bodies and uh, it compresses the vertebrae. And it's not good for their body before they've even started to, to hit the floor. It's not, the hitting the floor is the worst part, but well before that, the vertebrae compress. So this pad behind, I'd normally lay that down and then shoot my partner through that so they can let go so they don't hurt themselves. So there's no catching point. Uh, any type of joint manipulation, tapping your partner out with Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, it's an earth element connection to the joint. And the moment you lock that joint and put a bit of earth element to it, the person's got to tap. There's a, there's a, a submission in it. When you're running earth through someone, clearly define their methods of safety so you don't injure them. Uh, you have to be very, very sensitive with that. So now we, we touch our, our, our partner and we, we just um, don't tell them what direction we're going to send them. So he wasn't expecting me to take him that way, but I went fire to the left. I can do fire towards me. It's not magnetic. I'm just grabbing his energy and then driving fire. And it feels different for him. Rather than him getting sucked out, it's, it's him getting expanded out. Different sensation for your partner. So these four body methods of um, sinking, rising, swallowing, and shooting uh, that uh, are part of the more traditional Wing Chun systems, when you take vital energy, the, the vital force from building the ball, you expand the joints and use the four joint methods, um, which I've covered quite thoroughly. But basically, you expand energy from the center of joint. If I um, want to do um, a, a bit of electric and, and start pulsing it a little bit more and amping it up, then I expand and explode my own joints while I'm connected to him. Now, if I do that and I'm not extending my mind into him, nothing's happening to him. I'm doing everything inside me, but my mind is in me. If I want him to be affected, I have to put my mind in him when I do the body mechanic. So this is the first error a lot of people make when they start extending the gin. They don't get their mind out enough. They're not listening to their partner. I've got to feel my partner and then put energy into what I feel to influence him. Now, my energy has to be modulated or regulated to his frequency. So I energize what I feel in him to influence him. If I send my energy to him, it's not going to do anything if it's not in resonance with him. So I affect what I feel. So I energize what I feel in my partner. And if I'm doing air element, it's an air principle through what I feel to influence him to float or if it's shooting to send him back and so forth. Uh, the resonance principle has to be there. If my mind's not in resonance with him, I cannot affect him. It's an internal principle. If you read the book, The Kabbalion, it's a free audio book on YouTube. Listen to it every day, three hours every night for a month. And these lights will be going off in your head going, oh, wow, this Kabbalion is really, really interesting. The laws of resonance, the laws of rhythm, the laws of polarity and so forth. You apply it to Qigong and you'll get a lot of information awakening within your consciousness. Very, very, very valuable. Okay, once you've done these um, four body methods of four elements uh, in the vital and astral, the, the only difference between them is the mechanical structure. When you're vital, you have an elastic pressure between you and your partner. It's two springs connected and affecting each other. Um, my elasticity is affecting his elasticity. When you're working astrally, it's more hydraulic pressure models, like engineering for, for um, uh, hydrodynamics and in, in, in how water moves and how pressure moves feels totally different to the vital. Then the mental body goes into a whole different thing again, because you're released of space and you're sensitive to mind. You don't have this feeling of that you're condensed inside a space. You have to release space open to find the balance and move his balance like a feather. Now, when you move his balance like a feather, it's your mind connected to his mind and just opening the space around his center balance. So it has a place to go and you lead it there. It's much more gentle. And this is what teaches you about how to refine the spirit, how to refine the mental body when you practice meditation. These principles are super, super important because when I sit down to meditate, I've got to release my mental body out. So if I touch my partner and I release his mental space, now his body's relaxing. If I give it a direction, he's going to go back. But if I don't give it a direction, 
he, his, his mental space is just expanding. Now, if he goes to build the ball and he maintains, as soon as he breathes, his mental space contracted. So what I want to do, open it up again. Now you vital breathe. And because he's got a more expanded space, his sensation changes. He's got to recalibrate a little bit. And he'll go, oh, wow, I have more energy available to me because my mind is in a larger space. So more energy is available. Mental space is bigger. More sensitivity is available because the mind has less intention in it and it is softer. It softens when you expand. Because the energy that's there in your intentional mind gets spread out into a larger space. That means the spirit senses can function more efficiently. Okay, so that expanding of his mental space before he vital breathes, I do that to myself. If I want to vital breathe, I open my mental space and now my spirit senses can function instantly. If I go will breast like this, I will feel energy, it will condense, but it'll be raw and not a refined listening energy. So when people say Tai Chi is listening energy, it is this mental body quality which generates sensitivity and feels more resonance inside your partner's body to influence. That's why it's listening energy. I've got to be in resonance with my partner, I've got to listen to him for my energy to affect him. One of the misnomers in internal martial arts is you have to have a lot of power. You've got to cultivate a lot of chi. No, you just have to be healthy. Your body's got a ton of chi there. You have to develop listening. That's why Tai Chi is listening skill. They don't call Tai Chi Chi Kung for chi energy cultivation methods because you're not really cultivating energy. You're cultivating listening and the available energy is what you use. Your mind affects their chi, which influences their body. So it's your mind's cohesiveness and sensitivity to your partner, which allows you to affect them. Okay, so <clears throat> when uh, training these, you, ha you, you have to develop a model of troubleshooting. How do you get better at, at this? How do you improve your skill? So let's say um, I'm touching my partner and I can't get, get the energy to move him. I can't pick up his balance. So I make a checklist. Okay, uh, am I relaxing, hanging the muscles, opening the joints? Do I have this sensation in my awareness? And am I extending that sensation through him? Am I in resonance with what, what I feel within him, him and that energy is affecting him? You can go under the first circle, the shoulders, underneath the waist and underneath the feet. And so some people go under the shoulder, nothing. Under the hip, nothing. Under the feet, ah, okay, got him. Uh, more grounded people, you've got to get under the feet. And uh, some people naturally ground out their waist and go floppy on the top. Uh, while you're learning, you just say, oh, can you give me a clean line of tension from your hand to your foot so that I can get under that tension and experience and feel it. Once your skill develops, then you can be more competitive with your training partner. I don't recommend competitive more than, competitiveness more than once a week for the first year of developing this because the, the, the consciousness of being competitive is, requires too much contraction of your mental space. Uh, when you're developing listening, you've got to expand your mental space and you don't want to be competing. You want to be working with energy. <coughs> so this is very, very important in, in your development process. Okay, so uh, you make a checklist. Uh, is, can I feel my partner properly? Am I in a state of vital, vital energy or astral energy? Or, or in mental mental state of connection because of balance? Am I deep enough inside my partner? So let's say all those criteria are there and you're still not getting your partner. Is your partner too grounded for you? Uh, are, they, are they unconsciously resisting you and changing the conditions inside themselves? Try a few different people. There's a bell curve. You know, if you take 10 people, there'll be one that's closer to the, being very, very open. There'll be one that's very, very closed. And then there's people inside that curve. Now, when you touch each one of these people, you'll notice that people are very open. You don't have to go under them. You just open the energy up and they float. People who are very closed. You've got to get under, you've got to move, you've got to expand. You've got to use all the tools you have to influence them. If people are Tai Chi practitioners who have trained to empty their tension lines for many, many years, they'll naturally be unconsciously uh, neutralizing anything you're doing. So just say, oh, hold whatever state you're in, or whatever it is, but don't change that condition until you've broken their structure. 
and then they can change your condition to challenge you to be able to break the structure on a more deeper level. So this is um, uh, super important that you have high quality training partners. Don't test and compete more than once a week with, with people because uh, you'll get bad habits out of that. And you'll very quickly notice that uh, those habits will start to, to arise. Now, after when you finish a training session, chi in particular, your shoulders are going to be sore. You know, you're going to have a certain amount of, oh my, that was a, that was a workout. Because chi cell, the rolling, there's a certain amount of muscle use. And uh, if you're really tapping into the biotensecrity, that muscle use will be minimal. If you're using a lot of muscle, it'll be maximum. So what we do is we just turn our partner around, we feel the muscles and we feel the tension points, we touch and we release. Now I'm pulling his balance out towards me a little bit while I do the release to ensure that I'm getting deep enough. I touch again, and I relax and release. You can put a bit of vital in, energy in if you want, press energy in, then as you release, uh, and so forth. So as you go through the tensions in your partner's body, uh, you release the energy, the mental body has to come out, the tensions in between, you release that, and the physical body lets go. And you do five minutes for your partner, at the end of a session your partner does five minutes for you. You learn basic healing through this. If there's someone has an injury around you, a health problem, get in there and release it. It's amazing the, how you can heal a person's body with releasing in a very fast, very, very profound way. All right, thanks for your time, everyone. And um, we'll see you all in the next video. If you have any questions about this, let me know and I'll do a follow-up video for you.